This video is brought to you by Nebula. Who is this Pokemon? Charmander, a fire-type Pokemon known for the flame on the tip of its tail. In the scene you described, Charmander is surrounded by other Pokemon, such as Pikachu, a small, yellow rodent-like Pokemon hmm. with long ears and a lightning bolt-shaped tail. The setting appears to be the interior of a wooden cabin or house, with yep. the Pokemon standing on a wooden floor. Yep. The image is taken from a screen, as evidenced by the reflection of some items on the screen and wow. the style of the windows and walls. That's crazy. But yeah, it is a Pokédex. Hi, welcome to another episode of Cold Fusion. For decades, it's been a sci-fi dream to simply talk to your device and have it do tasks for you. With generative language AI starting to make this dream feasible, the question becomes, how do we turn these AI capabilities into a functional hardware device? Recently, a new unknown player has entered the space, Rabbit. The company only started raising money in October of 2023 and have already built out a product called the R1. This small orange device is causing waves in the online tech space. With 50,000 pre-orders sold out in just over a week, people are interested. So I figured that in this episode, I'll give my thoughts on the device, but I'll also show you the new AI industry that's forming right before our eyes. This is gonna be a deep dive. So sit back, relax, and let's get into it. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. We need some context. Rabbit aren't the first company to try AI hardware. They're the second. The first was Humane. And let's just say that they embarrassingly showed how hard it is to get this idea right. Many of you have heard of the Humane AI pin, unveiled in 2023 and unreleased at the time of this recording. It's a device you can speak to in natural language and have it do tasks for you. It has a holographic display and was supposed to replace your phone. Despite the founders having the pedigree of ex-Apple engineers, they didn't seem to live in reality. The device was more like an exercise in philosophy rather than practicality. Take a look at the CNBC interview where they failed to convince anyone. Can you see what's that? that? Yeah, what's yeah. that telling you? So this is, this is a display when you need it. It's just capable of doing a lot of things, but it's not something that you need because the device is actually built to be multimodal. That means you can use it however you want. Like right. what? Like what? Tell me something you would use that for. So you use it for just about anything, like uh, sending texts or checking up on any notifications that you've got in, stuff that you do just all. There's a speaker that's built in, and then there's a, a user LED called well, So that's what I want to ask you about. Imran, the co-founder, says that the device can do virtually anything a smartphone can, but without a screen, I doubt that's possible. Something as simple as discreetly reading emails or texts can't be done. Sometimes I'll be at a meeting, yeah. right? And, and I'm sneaking under the, under the desk to look at my email because right. that's, and I can't say, uh, hey, hey Siri, you know, tell me my email. Totally. Because I don't want the whole room to hear my email. So how does that work in this context? So the device is powered by an AI powered OS. I think the biggest thing here that is, is that it's AI powered. And so it's doing a lot of that, that heavy lifting for you. So you just actually engage with it when it's really important. But seriously, if, if I'm in a meeting and I'm talking to somebody, and but I gotta go like this when I'm in the meeting, and anybody who can see my hand can see the, see what I'm reading too. How, I mean, I don't know how that's yeah. different sure. than what the screen's doing. And then there's the price. Experiences. What's the price point? It's six ninety nine for this model, and it's seven ninety nine for the one that she's got, and that's the complete system. It comes with everything plus. Obviously, this hasn't gone too well as Humane has already laid off 4% of their staff before even launching. Their CTO has been kicked out too. But while all of this is going on, there's a new kid in town. Rabbit, with their new device called the R1. Firstly, what is it? That was delicious. Check the fridge and order the ingredients to make that again tomorrow. Create a route that works with my goals. Then, start the best playlist to keep me motivated. Watch what I'm doing here. Process all my new photos today just like this. Find us a nice restaurant near here, then get us there. Take me to the best spot to catch the sunset, and lead me through a meditation. Play my favorite song. I'm on it. At its core, the Rabbit R1 is supposed to be a device so simple that you don't need to learn how to use it. It's powered by a multimodal language model, supposedly more capable than ChatGPT. So of course, it can answer all the questions that you have, but the difference is it can interact with your apps and do tasks on your behalf. With a push to talk button, you don't need to say anything to wake it up. Just press and hold the button 
and talk like a walkie-talkie. I get a response 10 times faster than most of the voice AI projects. Get me a 12-inch pizza from Pizza Hut delivered to here. The most ordered option on the app is fine. Ordering a 12-inch pizza from Pizza Hut. Since you mentioned that the most ordered option is fine, I will select that for you. I just created an order for a 12-inch pizza. It's going to be hand-tossed with a classic marinara sauce and topped with regular cheese. Please confirm your order. That sounds really good. I just confirmed the order here. Now I'm waiting for my pizza. Instead of more complex actions, that may take multiple apps to finish on a smartphone. For example, if I want to plan a trip to London, I can just describe what I wish in full to R1. I want to take my family to London. It's going to be two of us and a child age 12. We're thinking of January 30th to February 5th. Can you plan the entire trip for me? We like cheap non-stop flights, grouped seats, a cool SUV, and a nice hotel that has Wi-Fi. Exploring ticketing options to make your trip a reality. For your trip, I found various flight options, a range of hotels to choose from, and car rentals available. Please confirm each option individually for further details and booking. Could you come up with a schedule for fun things to do while I'm over there? I have prepared a detailed travel plan for your trip. In summary, you will be exploring London's iconic landmarks, visiting museums, enjoying delicious meals at local restaurants, and experiencing the vibrant atmosphere of different neighborhoods. Navigation details are also prepared, and I can help you book tickets for any events you'd like to attend. R1 just planned the entire trip for me, that's awesome. But it seems like this is a little bit too intense. Can you plan an easy schedule for us? Sure, I'm working on it. Please take a look at it and let me know what you think. It gave me a more relaxed schedule every day with all the details. Sounds really good. And I just confirmed that. I can foresee a wonderful trip. Isn't that cool, huh? You can use the camera to recognize real-world objects and ask questions about them. For example, what meals to make from a fridge, or... What are people talking here? Let me take a look. In the image, there is a conversation taking place in a chat application. The participants are discussing Rabbit OS and its capabilities, specifically mentioning a music sequencer. One person is curious if Rabbit OS has a music sequencer built in, and another suggests that it can manipulate your digital audio workstation, DAW. They also mention using it as a learning tool and seem to be preparing for the next topic or task in their discussion. Whether it works as well as the demos is another question entirely. The Rabbit company stresses that the R1 is not a phone, but unlike Humane, it's not aiming to replace it. The R1 has a 2.8 inch screen, which is small given that the average smartphone screen is 6 inches these days. But the small screen is meant for increasing utility rather than the main form of user interaction. In addition, the R1 has a physical scroll wheel, a push to talk button so it doesn't need a trigger phrase to listen, a 360 swivel camera, and into the vision, it rotates. And of course, a speaker. It's been designed by Teenage Engineering, who makes music hardware and famously designed the Nothing Phone. Its design might be polarizing, but at the very least, the device is interesting enough to get people talking. In terms of the business case for Rabbit, there are some clear threats. Generative AI technology is looking for consumer killer applications. Entrepreneurs are naturally trying to find the best ways to use it. Recently, Jabril made a pretty hilarious video about coding and building his own companion AI device. But I played with it for a bit and it feels more like Uber Bestie instead of actually having one. So if I want a true AI Bestie, I need to get more control. And after a few hours of Python dependency hell, check this out. <laughs> I got it working on the Raspberry Pi. My little AI homie's name is Chai, by the way. And from there, I started working on the portability by buying the right parts for it and giving a little auto start script. Started working on Chai's actual build form with a Raspberry Pi screen and a 3D printer. And I just kept on iterating on this process until my main man Chai was in one solid piece. So as you can see, he is uh, one complete build, one solid object, a microphone on top, the back's closed. Please don't ask how I charge him. It's our new AI bestie thing. My buddy here actually has his own personality. Watch this. I'm a black guy who loves anime. What do you think about that? Aren't we breaking stereotypes here? A black guy who loves anime. Alert the media because this is such groundbreaking information. Dude, you enjoy what you enjoy. Who cares about what anyone else thinks? Aren't we high five keep watching dragon ball or whatever you're into 
Interesting. So he like partially roasted me, but also ended on a positive upbeat. Listen, if I'm being real, that sounds a lot closer to what an actual best friend would do. Sander ChatGPT could never. So the fact that one single guy can do this means that there's probably a bunch of startups chomping at the bit to enter the hardware AI space. In fact, Sam Altman and SoftBank's Masayoshi Son are both trying to get the iPhone designer, Johnny Ive, to design their respective AI hardware devices. Microsoft is looking at the development of the R1 with great interest. Satya Nadella hints that Microsoft could jump into the AI hardware space. You see, I, I thought the, the, the demo of uh, the Rabbit OS and uh, the device was fantastic. I think I, I must say after Jobs' uh, pr uh, sort of launch of iPhone, probably one of the most impressive presentations I've seen of capturing the, uh, the vision. Uh, of what is possible going forward for what is an agent-centric um, uh, operating system and interface. And uh, I think that's what everybody's going seeking. If you have a breakthrough in natural interface, uh, where this idea that you have to go one app at a time and all of the cognitive load is with you uh, as a human, uh, does seem like there can be a real breakthrough. If you had the first generation, whether it was Cortana or Alexa or Siri or what have you, um, it was just not, it was too brittle, uh, where we didn't have these transformers, these large language models, uh, whereas now we have, I think, the tech to go and come up with a new app model. And once you have a new interface and a new app model, I think new hardware is also possible. And is that an opportunity for Microsoft or are you moving Absolutely. away from hardware? I mean, look, I mean, for always, it's an opportunity for us. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, we make hardware. But even for the whole category of AI hardware devices as a whole, it's a risky segment to be in. There's a quiet AI revolution going on in smartphones. Snapdragon's new chip, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, is out now and is already giving smartphones new on-device AI capabilities. Samsung's S24 is one of the first devices to fully take advantage. Mr. Who's the Boss shows us some examples. So the first is instant slow-mo. Literally, go into your phone's gallery, hold down on any video in it, and bam. It halves the playback speed while keeping it smooth using real-time frame interpolation. For example, if you download a PDF on your phone, one tap will summarize it. If you're browsing a website on the internet, you now have a button that can read the entire page for you and churn out a very good summary in like two seconds. If you have an AI feature that can be pulled off completely on your device, it's likely to be faster because it doesn't need to connect to the internet, more reliable because you can use it literally anywhere on the planet, regardless of whether you're connected or not, and also safer, since none of your data is actually having to leave your phone at all. And so... In time, Google Assistant or Siri could simply be updated with similar capabilities to the R1. With neural hardware chips on device, they'll be more powerful, faster, and convenient. Another idea is that these standalone AI devices could just be integrated into a watch. That way, you don't have to carry around a separate device. So, the unfortunate truth could be that this new segment might be over as soon as it started, unless there's a killer application. I could be completely wrong though. Keen tech enthusiasts and tinkerers might find ways to make the R1 useful beyond anything I can imagine right now. So how does it work? Well, the device works by using what Rabbit are calling a LAM, or a large action model, instead of the traditional large language model. The main difference is that it can be used for actually doing tasks instead of just understanding linguistic context and replying to a question. If you remember those AI agents built on top of ChatGPT last year, it's kind of like those. For those interested, the R1 LAM model is based off something called neurosymbolic programming. This method combines newer neural networks with older symbolic AI, which represents objects as symbols and processes the information that way. Neurosymbolic programming has worked in narrow fields like robotic automation and CAD software. I'll bring in Jabril's to explain a bit more. Modern neural networks train a model on lots of data and predict answers using best guesses and probabilities. But symbolic AI, or good old fashioned AI, as it's sometimes called, is hugely different. Symbolic AI requires no training, no mass amounts of data, and no guesswork. 
It represents problems using symbols and then uses logic to search for solutions. All right, so I did a lot of research into neural symbolic AI uh, talks in research papers, and I learned that it has the same trappings and limitations of just regular symbolic AI. You essentially will define a bunch of if else statements, and instead of using humans to determine the variables that go into these if else statements, you'll use an AI to extract features from a certain system or process and then do if else statements on that output. But one of the biggest limitations from neural symbolic AI is that you need domain experts to craft the if else statements with the good type of biases. But bias is unavoidable. Is this the right task for the job? I'm a little skeptical, but maybe they know something that we don't know. Everything that they're promising could be demonstrated by releasing an app, which is kind of weird that they are going for hardware that costs only $200 with no subscription fee. When we all know AI API calls at scale is not cheap, but I mean, who knows? Maybe they know something that we don't know and have funding that we're not aware of. This could potentially just be a little niche trend like Polaroid cameras or maybe an industry shift like the iPhone. I have my skepticisms, but only time will tell. Want to get a ride to the office? There's an app for that. Want to buy groceries? There's another app for that. Each time you want to do something, you fumble through multiple pages and folders to find the app you want to use. And there are always endless buttons that you need to click. If we can make an AI trigger actions on any kind of interface, just like a human would, it will solve the problem. So how does the rabbit manage to execute the apps that you have without you doing anything? Well, there's a setup process, which means you have to log into the apps that you normally use, so it has access to the data within. You can also train the R1 on new apps by using the company's web portal and showing the device how you use that particular app. And once it's been shown, it can do that automatically on your behalf. This is cool and opens up a lot of doors, but it seems like a lot of effort to the casual user who just wants the device to work. So what are some advantages? It's fast. Something that stood out to me is the response time of a claimed 500 milliseconds or less. That takes a lot of the jankiness out of the experience, so that's very interesting. Unlike today's voice assistants on a phone, you don't have to speak specifically. Today's voice assistants will often get confused if you ask them to do a task. The R1, being like ChatGPT, but also being more able to execute tasks, is much more useful. But probably one of the most interesting aspects is the price. Costing just $199 US dollars with no subscription, compared to the Humane, which is $600 with a subscription, it's compelling in this new segment. So what about the disadvantages? You have to carry around another device that might not possess the utility to warrant doing that. When I've talked to friends and people about this device, everyone just says, why can't it just be an app? Being voice first can be awkward and goes against current social conventions. There's also the issue of complete confidence in the technology. Take Uber for example. Will you trust the R1 to do the task correctly? If you're booking your flights and hotels, there might be specific preferences which could be missed because the device simply couldn't know that. Also, for ordering food, without seeing menu options, it seems like you miss out on browsing on what you want. So in conclusion, the Rabbit R1 is the archetype of a revolutionary product, but its usefulness is undetermined and killer applications aren't yet apparent in my view. It's a great tool for early adopters who love to tinker, but the mainstream will take some time, especially getting used to a voice-first device. But that's not the end of the story. Many people do roll their eyes at the term AI, but you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. With any new technology, there's going to be scams and gimmicks, but also some useful applications. The question is, what category does the rabbit fall into? It's hard to say. I think the rabbit is interesting because it's bootstrapped to the ever-improving capabilities of AI. What do I mean by that? Well, in theory, it's possible those 50,000 pre-order customers who begin to show the rabbit how to use their favorite apps essentially become a huge aggregate training dataset for the LAM system. This could mean that the R1 eventually becomes as good as humans at understanding any app interface. All it would need is a software update when the aggregate training is complete, and that's fascinating to think about. And because of that, along with a modding community, I'm not so quick to throw this concept away. Those were just my thoughts. I'll leave you with a question. What custom uses can you think of for such a device? Getting a conversation going around this could be really cool. In the end, whether capable AI assistants come from smartphones or a standalone device, Steve Wozniak was right after all. Eventually, all, all those apps and all, I, yeah, I just want to get to worry about not even having to find an app. You still have to find the apps, but I want the apps to be able to 
become a part of the voice system. I want every program to start coming out and being a part of Siri, every app on the iPhone. And the same thing would apply to other tech, other platforms. I just want to give a quick shout out to Nebula. If you're tired of YouTube ads and want to see all your favorite educational creators like Real Engineering, Half as Interesting, and Wendover Productions in one spot, Nebula is the place for you. It's a streaming platform built by creators for creators. You can see my videos ad-free and there's exclusive content by some of the best in the business. There's also no algorithms for us to worry about, so we can experiment. For example, Polymatter has done an exclusive video solely on China's one-child policy, and it was very interesting. It's part of his larger series called China, Actually. If you sign up using the link below, you get to support me directly and get Nebula for 40% off an annual plan. That's a little over $2.50 a month. It's the best deal in streaming. I'm looking to expand Cold Fusion this year, and Nebula's expertise and deep understanding of the challenges of content creation will help with that. Signing up to the link also helps me achieve that goal. So thank you. If you're interested in anything science, technology, or business, feel free to subscribe to Cold Fusion. It's free. So thanks for watching. My name is Dagogo, and you've been watching Cold Fusion, and I'll catch you again soon for the next episode. Cheers, guys. Have a good one.